And it is time for me to now move on and invite the game changers of the Indian gaming industry. We're looking at talking on the panel discussion on the decade of gaming and gaming investments. Well, we're later to be joined by Abhishek Isar, the founding member, FEAI. We've got Rajiv Navani, the founder and CEO of Jet Synthesis. We've got Gagan Narang, founding member, FEAI, and president, Telugu Esports Association. We've got Vishal Gondal, the founder of Koki and Encore Games. We've got uh, Saloni uh, uh, Sehgal, who's a general partner of Lumikai. Limited. We've got uh, Ruhel Amin, Senior Editor, BW Business World and Exchange for Media, Executive Editor, BW Applause, who's going to be the session chair. Well, with this, uh, Ruhel, the stage and screen is all yours to take it forth with your wonderful panel. And I'm sure there's going to be a Thank lot you. of great uh, insights coming forth. Over to you. Thank you, Bhavna. And uh, what a great topic we have and what a great just heard uh, and the numbers it threw. So we have around uh, 45 minutes, so I want to really start uh, with my discussion. The topic is the decade of gaming and gaming investments. A lot has changed in the past uh, 10 years. It's a huge window. We come to it, we try to understand uh, what are the shifts happening in the gaming industry. Uh, I want to start with uh, Saloni, uh, the only lady on the panel first with you. Uh, give me an, you know, what we saw in uh, the uh, humongous growth of gaming and then everything opened up. I just want to quickly get a uh, view about uh, the sustenance of that growth. Are we seeing the same kind of numbers right now as well? Yeah. You know, thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, I think that's a great, um, great question. Um, I've been tracking now the games markets, both from a global perspective and from, from a domestic perspective for the last you know, decade or so. And when Lumikai launched back in 2020, you know, we were the first, and we still are the first sector focused gaming fund in the country. And the reason why we launched uh, was there were a couple of inflection points that we saw in the market. And uh, those inflection points have since then panned out. You know, when we were launching a fund, we heard things like India's not ready for a, India's not, India doesn't pay for games. India doesn't play games. India's a DAO farm. India will never be able to provide exits for gaming companies. India will never be able to justify a, a venture strategy for gaming. Gaming as an asset class doesn't exist in India. And these were, these were all the narratives that we were hearing about the market when we launched. However, there were some very key inflection points that were occurring in the market that we saw very early on. Now, by in 2020, the biggest, um, I guess, cocktail of su successful attributes that make a gaming ecosystem started to come together. You had game usage, game adoption, game monetization, and infrastructure all converge in a way that has never happened before. Now, in 2020 and 2021, India has now been the world's largest and second largest markets for mobile game downloads. India constitutes 17% of the mobile gaming downloads, right? So there is ample demand. In terms of payment infrastructures now, digital transactions now account for nearly 40% of transaction volume. Now, that's a far stark change from the mid-20s and the middling 10s that we had a couple of years back. In terms of... Um, monetization you know we were uh, lumikai we did a research report uh, last year and we discovered that india's gaming market is 2.2 billion dollars and we project that it's expected to grow by 30% over the next 3 years to 7 billion dollars with right. iap which is in app purchases going to be uh, growing at a CAGR of 36% now all of these uh, data points to the fact that India is a, as a gaming market, it's time has come, right? right? We have seen game developers go from, you know, less than 25 to north of 850, who we've all spoken to within the uh, span of last year. So a lot has changed in terms of uh, game development and adoption. You know, we are still, we're a market of 450 million gamers, 100 million battle royale players, and 100 million paying users. These are stats of right. a mini country. I have specific questions coming to those numbers. I want to go to Abhishek. Abhishek, your, how do you sum up last two years in terms of the impact? Of course, 
we know uh, issues, but where are we now? Are we seeing the same kind of impact on numbers? Thanks, Royal. <clears throat> Very good afternoon to everybody. Great to be part of this panel. Uh, we see a bevy of stars. Um, I think Saroni has kind of uh, summarized the market fairly well and covered a fair amount of um, trends uh, with respect or what we can expect. But the last two years, more uh, importantly, uh, you know, one is the business side of things, the other is the attributing policy support. And we see that, you know, India is definitely um, undergoing a massive churn as far as the policy outlook is concerned. Um, and we feel that this very stage that we find ourselves in is, is the beginning of, um, uh, you know, um, uh, a new chapter um, as far as India's gaming market is concerned, because um, if we are able to attribute some of these trends backed by a uh, supportive policy outlook by the government of India, automatically we are looking at uh, scaling up um, uh, to potential that, you know, uh, have been thought of and spoken of, but we feel that uh, the actual growth story of this country is by far um, not, not really calculated or considered right now. In the previous session, you know, Mr. Vevi Dangi highlighted a couple of aspects uh, with respect to the esports uh, outlook, as, uh, you know, as far as India is concerned. Our main endeavor has been to make sure that, you know, we can support the policy makers with respect to a policy framework. Um, right. Even two years back, if we were to uh, look at a simple aspect of uh, what really constitutes um, the, the framework of gaming, uh, there are multiple subsets within that, you know, esports forms a very independent space vis-a-vis -vis the others. Um, today, the government has taken a very concerted stand uh, at, during the budget to constitute an ABGC task force. Clearly, uh, G within that, which is gaming, will play a pivotal role uh, in formulating the the, the scale of growth that you know, India can potentially see in this space. So uh, that's you know an introductory note if I would uh, sort of like to uh, pause at. Uh, Rajan, uh, your quick thoughts? Yeah, I think that, yeah. yeah, I think I think around the uh, you know the uh, the last decade on gaming has definitely been a big one. Uh, you know, especially if you are, what was it? Did you ask a specific question, Ruel? Because yes, I, okay, okay, maybe yes. Uh, you were trying to connect. My uh, question was uh, 23 months, uh, the huge growth, and now uh, you're coming back home. Do people still. Uh, Ruel, sorry, I can't hear you. Okay. So, uh, Ruhel, I believe there's some uh, audio disturbance which is coming. So, maybe if you've connected with a headset or something, you could just, just try and sort okay. it out. Thank I'll you. just... Am I still audible? Yeah, yeah you are very audible. much audible. Yeah, yeah. I think you can go ahead with this audio. Please. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Rajan, quickly ask you, a lot of us has changed in the last two years. Uh, where are we now in terms of numbers also? Uh, let me add another question to it. Uh, the regulatory framework, the, the government has also come in in a huge way. Your quick thoughts on these lines. Okay, so I think I, I was able to capture the essence of your question, but again, there was disturbance. But yes, I think, I think in terms of, uh, you know, the growth that the gaming sector has seen, uh, especially in the last two years, you know, has been significant as we've all discussed, you know, whether it is, you know, driven just by engagement or the development of the esports uh, kind of arena, which has also been discussed extensively, and the entire interest from the world in India, you know, is just the expansive growth into the pandemic. You know, every month we seem to be adding anywhere between five to ten million new gamers, uh, and also deepening engagement with existing gamers. Uh, the types of games that people are playing have changed drastically. A lot more social, a lot more first friends are made on on this game kind of conversations happening. Women coming more into gaming, so there are a large number of trends that have accelerated gaming, and I think you know will continue to do so, especially with five G and many other new technological developments that are coming. So I think on on that front, uh, India is really well positioned to not only uh, you know be able to uh, benefit from uh, this entire surge in gaming, but play a key role in the global, uh, you know, future of gaming uh, as it tends to develop. 
Uh, on the regulatory question, I think uh, given that you know we have the highest number of downloads in games, uh, there's huge interest and still big gap in terms of where we are as an industry compared to the rest of the world. Uh, there is this effort to you know kind of define gaming in India because it's still very nascent. And in that process, I think you know we have got many types of uh, you know gaming activities that uh, are beginning to take shape based on what you know. The consumer in India is, is is looking at as a definition of of game. Uh, you know, of course, uh, the the role of government, uh, you know, is really one where uh, I would see it, you know, play out uh, in a manner that will will be a little back and forth because there is no clarity on some of the key areas, and we see some state governments, especially when it comes to you know real money gaming and fantasy, take certain stands. But I think those are going to be you know, uh, an evolution of any industry that is, you know, nascent, but, you know, as aspiring to probably, you know, be at a, at a level which is significantly higher from where we are today, even in terms of, you know, what uh, that, that impact could have on the rest of the world. And I think in some of right. the like esports, we're really looking at how we shape the future of that. So this is going to continue in some shape and form. I think on the esports front also, you know, we just ran a, Real cricket tournament uh, with FEAI recently, which actually followed the the process of you know getting the states to to find out the best players and then you know created a layered process of identifying national champions who then could really be people who could represent the country in a typical esports kind of a thing. Right? So if we are looking at the movement of a casual gamer to a professional gamer as the funnel through which we will see gaming accelerate. You know, and then the ability for us to take those players, you know, into into the larger global market um, as established ranking players. I think all of that is all happening at the same time. You know, there is a centre role, there is a, a state role. You know, there is a, uh, there are a multiple ministries, and I think that's what we have been able to identify right. in a new promotion on AVGC, bringing skills. So a lot of lot of areas where government can come in, uh, and you know. Help strengthen this industry. It's it's already work in progress, but it will evolve and strengthen. And you know, at the Indian Digital Gaming Society, which I'm the president of, we see a lot more activity in policy making and decision. I mean, discussions with government today than we've seen ever before. Right. Um, great. Um, of course, I think uh, what you mentioned and what the panelists before you said. Um, of course, uh, uh, Vishal. Uh, how do you see what are your quick thoughts on this yeah it's 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 amazing to have this discussion uh, i remember we launched as india games the first esports tournament in india almost 20 years back it was at that point of call world cyber games we had partnered uh, with the north korea the south korean organization uh, and we had organized this in india and now almost 20 years later we are talking about esports I think esports is clearly at a very important juncture. It is the IPL moment of esports today, is what I believe. And the reason I'm calling it an IPL moment is because either it can become really big and take off and it can become a mass movement of youth, or it could be completely embroiled in conflicts of interest of all these real money and all these other kind of gaming. So while I know Saloni talked about billions of dollars of revenue, the reality is none of the games are making those revenue. Bulk of that revenue is going to uh, all these other kinds of games. And clearly government involvement, while we welcome it, but you know, is government running BCCI or IPL or any of the sports association? No, I mean, this is run by professionals from these fields. But I think what has happened is India is a very unique case where there is a huge confusion on what is gambling and what is not, which is causing the government intervention. So I'm actually a little concerned that while we all want esports to grow and as an association, I think what, uh, you know, the move is really good. But I think we need to be very clear right. that this is an industry association of people from the industry and these are not going to be determined by conflicts of interests of you know different parties who want to run their agenda. So that is one very clear part. The second part is that gaming in India is growing. But if you look at the app store, the top 50 games, hardly two, three or five games are in India out of the top 50. 
This is not happening in any other industry. Look at the OTT content. Look at Netflix. Look at Amazon Prime. Look at Hotstar. The number one content pieces are India, Indian created, Indian themed, and while of course we all love to watch our foreign shows, but they are not the 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 blockbuster shows. But unfortunately, that is not the case in gaming. Uh, people are still playing PUBG and Garena Free Fire and Call of Duty, and these are amazing games. I also play them, but I think uh, there needs to be a massive push on content creation. And as we know, that millions of dollars was invested by all the large studios in making content. So so far, millions of dollars have been spent either on TV advertising or. you know customer acquisition given that most companies could not even advertise or put their games on google store i think it's right. high time that money goes into game production and the players players should be making money right now it's the scenario is that e sports players are just you know making random videos and they're getting paid by it and not by playing e sports uh, so right, think, right. Uh, there is a right. lot which can be done and i think this framework is great and uh, Uh, i am happy to see that the leaders are here you know rajan i have great respect for and i think under the leadership of rajan and abhishek and the entire thing here i think we have a good thing going which is why uh, i have right. my support yeah yes vishal absolutely i think the focus has to be on the content creation as well as much as we are marketing and you know spending on advertising that's what your point is uh, gagan do you agree with it uh, is there an uneven focus on where the really well absolutely i think i couldn't agree more with what rajan and vishal pointed out i think the idea here is to have a very inclusive approach where we have the industries uh, a uh, requirement safeguarded as well as the players and, and the right balance needs to be struck and uh, what uh, more importantly would be you know uh, the stakeholders in the industry needs to be taken care of and everything needs to revolve around the athletes and uh, create an, an an environment which is which is very uh, friendly for everyone to prosper and uh, i mean the whole idea of gaming you know opens a lot of opportunities for people especially you know someone i mean i mean if you just think of it you know someone's playing a game running in the game who's probably you know a para athlete can play something that 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 you can like for example bgmi or free fire or whatever so it opens a lot of opportunities that way from the perspective of the athlete and especially with the meta coming in and so many other uh, content creators coming in these days you know it's going overboard and i think uh, like uh, vishal uh, mentioned it's the ipl moment i would call it the hockey stick curve you know where in you know the curve just goes up so exciting times right. ahead right exciting times ahead uh, rajun um, jet synthesis has invested you know a lot in uh, esports ecosystem so give me a sense of uh, what is next we we talk about nfts vr metaverse uh, what are you planning uh, in that space Well, it's interesting right when we talk of metaverse now i think gaming actually in a way represents that you know for many years like what vishal was saying you know there have been so many of the aspects of the future of what we would talk of a immersive digital world you know which gaming has actually been at the forefront for so in a way it's a recognition of you know what the power of digital is going to be uh, you know in the future so in 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 one way it, it encompasses that the second uh, you know point uh, to that as you mentioned correctly is that you know we when we started looking at esports gaming investing around you know all of these uh, uh, plays it was very clear that an individual is going to be spending a lot more time uh, in the digital world than in the real world right and we've seen gen z's and the number of hours and the kind of engagement that is spent in the digital world and and for us really you know the entire space of gaming entertainment is to be able to to build a relationship with the digital consumer and then cater to larger parts of the digital right and and we have interest based communities also that do that right so for us the greater the immersiveness in a in in the digital life uh, you know the 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 more we believe the opportunity for for growth uh, you know uh, is is available to us the second big point is that you know ultimately this is all the metaverse is about creating an economy around the virtual goods 
right? For the first time, India has recognized, you know, digital virtual goods as, you know, as a category of an asset class, etc. So, if one were to really extend and extrapolate that further, uh, more time, more of people's lives being spent in the digital world, and an economy that is being generated, you know, around that. that uh, I think uh, for jet synthesis, uh, we are just about one percent of our journey complete as of today because the the window of opportunity that has thrown open is 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 just so massive when one were to you know look at it in that context and that's really how we have been you know playing out and we we are right. taking a lot of steps to to be able to unlock that potential of that world as well. So Ruel, I just want to add uh, one thing on the metaverse because there is another very big opportunity from an India perspective, which is the whole concept of guilds and how esports and play to earn is coming in. Uh, recently, we have partnered with Animoca Brands, which is the global leader in the metaverse and the whole Web3 space. And one of the big pieces around esports becoming a career is about the whole idea of guilds. And if you look at countries like Philippines and Indonesia, people are literally making income, you know, earning multiple hundreds of dollars a year, a month, a day, actually, sorry, not a month, sitting at home playing these games professionally. And what is happening is in this new era of gaming, it is just like how uh, I buy a car and then I have a racer who's racing the car, like in an F1 race and the, and the driver and I split or have some kind of a fee. So literally people are buying virtual characters. So you could buy Axie Infinity characters and then these mm -hmm. professional athletes are called scholars. And by the way, we are now working with multiple scholars. And then you lend your, your items to these scholars and they play the game and they win the game and you have a right. revenue to share with them on the winning. So I think the metaverse is, is a very broad concept, but from an esports perspective, uh, you know, I know Gagan was talking about how do athletes make money? Because ultimately, we all know, right, if we want athletes to take this up, if you only 5, 10 athletes are making, you know, money and 99% are not making any money, then nobody will do this. So right. I think there is a tremendous need to also accelerate the guilds and uh, governance around the guilds itself. Uh, which I think is a very big opportunity from an Indian esports perspective. Right. Uh, Saloni, uh, I want to understand from you that since you're focused on for Indian game developers, what big disruption will attract the next USD 100 million in your view? Sorry. Uh, Sorry yeah, yes. very happy to answer that. But before that, I want to go back to a few uh, you know data points that were raised. Um, and some some stuff that I think Vishal said, you know, I think it's important for us to now start looking at numbers and uh, start looking at more data points, right? Um, actually, surprisingly now in India, when we talk about the game sizing market, a very healthy majority of that revenue is coming from in-app purchases and, uh, and advertisements. It's actually no longer just purely RMG, which is driving the market. Further, when we look at projections, third, uh, nearly 50% of IAPs are nearly 50% of global, India revenues are actually going to be generated from IAPs and that's user behavior. In fact, the average spending capacity for a gamer in India is now about $14 with, uh, with mid-core players spending between $50 to $70 a month. So there, these, these trends are, are remarkably changing and changing very fast. And also to go back to the fact that, you know, currently there are no titles which are India focused or Indian in nature, and it's never been seen before, but that's not true. When you look at markets which go through inflection points, whether it's the China market or whether it's the Turkey market, and I used to track, track the China market for a very long period of time. In 2004, actually foreign games used to account for 80% of China's titles and 70% of domestic revenue. In fact, the legend of Mir, very much like PUBG from South Korea was, was the country's top revenue generator that year. And in 2007, right. literally three years later, domestic online games or digital games started accounting for nearly 70% of the China market, which at that point of time I was one percent. You are forgetting that the Chinese government effectively banned foreign publishers from publishing games. Yeah, that they banned a long time ago. That they had I'm banned so sorry a long to time interrupt. Ago. I am so sorry. Now we are yeah. short.
I would like uh, a quick response uh, from you, uh, Saloni, before I go uh, to Abhishek yeah. and Gagan and try to put in one more question. Yeah, so, you know, I think what disrupts is going to be original content. We've already been betting on content plays. Nearly 50% of Numekai's portfolio is content plays, whether it's Indian companies uh, building for India from the world or Indian companies building for India from India. I think that's a combination of both. We've got companies like Studio Sira, which are building strategy uh, CCG games, which are just fantastic, very high quality immersive experiences, which rival world-class uh, games. Uh, we have a company called Bombay Play, and all of these companies are doing incredibly exciting stuff for the India market. And there's, you know, going to be much more news about these companies over the next quarter or so that's going to come out. But that, right. that momentum of backing Indian content is already underway. Right, right. Uh, Abhishek, uh, I want to understand from you, uh, how does India actualize its esports e potential if you look at the policy outlook? And how important uh, is a stable policy approach to the entire Right. You know, I mean, where are we to the entire ecosystem for them to expand and get the investments we are talking about? Sure. I think, um, Royal, we've, we've made a bit of a head start. I think uh, what Vishal, Rajan, Saloni and Gagan, of course, are highlighting are all very pivotal aspects, right? We're all talking of four or five different very critical aspects of where the direction that we are on right now. But if you Let's be also fair and conscious to ourselves. The Indian market is actually at a very young stage. There's a long way off before we sort of can, you know, shape this out and contour it into uh, having most of the games available on the App Store, uh, you know, coming out of the Indian uh, uh, developers. Uh, fortunately, we have uh, in this very panel, uh, you know, two such um, very strong representative of the Indian gaming industry. And I think uh, compliments to Exchange for Media for having to set this panel up because at one end, we need to empower multiple subs game developers and ideas to sort of come come to the fore and let's be conscious till about a year back the government of india incidentally was still um, if i were to for a lack of a better word ruminating over the idea of how to look at gaming today they've taken a very conscious stand and if it comes from the honorable prime minister of the country where he's highlighting that you know we need to promote indigenous games i think what saloni is saying is that there's enough disruption taking place we just need to have a concerted outlook and continue to kind of support the ecosystem we are a long way off before india actually becomes a very um, independent narrative as far as the esports um, player ecosystem is concerned right gagan mentioned that's uh, you know uh, the reason why we have some, you know, a stalwart Indian Olympian like Gagan Narang with us is to be able to guide uh, Federation of Electronic Sports Associations India to take the right sort of steps and measures from day one, where the core focus is the athlete. What we've learned in, in our very short journey in the recent past is that the athlete base in this country is very minuscule. We need to expand ourselves. And one of the big impediments we felt was not not the fact that you know there are no young emerging business ideas there are there are multiple right and and we have focus funds like lumika now looking at these aspects in fact uh, rajan vishal are also investors in, in, into this ecosystem fact of the matter is it it needs a robust uh, support system coming in from the policy makers which we see taking shape right now you know uh, in the inaugural session mr baba dange mentioned founding director of fei We've already curated a policy document, which we intend to take to the government. In some parts, it's been sort of uh, presented already. What are the core submissions and recommendations there? That you know, we need to decentralize our outlook, empower the state governments, aim at creating multiple centers of excellence, not just towards um, just just the sheer idea of you know encouraging young minds to make games, but also create ecosystem uh, by way of esports clinics, etc to have multiple access points to young kids, right? Because for any such organization to succeed, you eventually, you know, it, it'll be at the behest of the young athletes. And, it, and if we are not able to right. cater to their interests and make a competitive ecosystem, we're not going anywhere. One last point I'd like to highlight is, India is the la largest smartphone economy, right? We need to be conscious that that is the pivot that, you know, India will bring to the world of gaming and esports per se. So currently the world is, you know, of course, uh, mobile phone plays a very important role. But as far as India is concerned, we are looking at over the next sort of five odd years, a CAGR of 10.5% incremental growth, reaching a market size of 281 billion, right? Almost doubling mm -hmm. from where we are today. If, right. uh, because we are conscious of it, 
we are able to see that you know there's a strong element of education coming into this there's a strong element of currency that will come into this right there's a reason vishal highlighted right that otts currently are featuring the likes of indian movies etc at a global film let's be fair bollywood has taken that journey it's been a long time right and mm-hmm. ably supported by uh, the the largest community within this country that's the direction we all need to sort of community absolutely community sit on and and head absolutely. towards absolutely absolutely final point uh, gagan uh, closing remarks from you uh, so what would be the hot bets uh, in terms of trends for 2022 23 for the gaming industry in well, your uh, like i said our focus uh, especially from the perspective of fai would be to have a robust and uh, and, and a friendly ecosystem which uh, takes care of the needs of the industry as well as the athletes and uh, i mean we spoke about technology and i'm so happy that this is one of the most uh, i would say uh, intelligent conversations that we've had so far or rather i have had so far on gaming and and with vishal and rajan and solomi coming in i think it adds a lot of value and perspective to to this uh, platform and and what better use of technology i'm sitting here in the middle of the jungle and still i am not away from technology i'm 40 feet up on a tower talking to all of you and uh, i mean that's that's what it's that's what that is what is going to grow and i think uh, going forward with especially with respect to fai we would want to build a very india centric uh, narrative as well because you know like uh, most of you mentioned that we have a lot of foreign games coming into the picture and if you hear about the avgc comment that uh, the prime minister also made he spoke about having the indian narrative into it so that would also be one of our key points going forward of course uh, having placing athletes first is very very important their mental well being their physical well being is also important and that is the, that is when the whole industry of course you know you will have to educate the parents as well because they are the ones who actually you know uh, gives the smartphone to a kid and say okay you can play now and so on and so forth so once they yeah. start getting paid for it like vishal said i think the whole ecosystem is going to go right up and uh, and like i said you know exciting times coming forward and good to catch up with all of you here Thank you so much. Uh, uh, well, one yes. one last point I'd like to conclude on, just to kind of continue on this theme, right? We we recently hosted a four month long tournament on one of India's favorite games, which is cricket, right? Um, incidentally, it comes out of the Jet Synthesis banner. What we are saying is, it was not just a way of FEI putting out its intent in b- developing indigenous games. We had entries of over one lakh kids, twelve thousand five hundred odd kids eventually participated, right? right? And it turned But, out to be a, a, a fascinating yeah, yeah. contest. I- I'm so sorry. Games. So sorry to cut it here, but thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, I got a queue, and the next speaker is lined up. But thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you.